one angry truck. <laughs> today 2000 GMC Sierra V8 5.3 owner says uh, so obviously this truck is tuned has a camshaft exhaust you know all the go fast goodies um, recently he's been having a problem where the truck just started running really badly misfiring I'm stalling out Owner said it set a crankshaft position sensor performance code, P0336. He went ahead and replaced the crankshaft position sensor with an OEM AC Delco unit. Didn't change it. Truck even ran worse. Before I got here, he said it was sitting for you know weeks. Couldn't get it started. I got it started. It was not happy. I had to kind of warm it up with the throttle. And uh, it's still setting the P0336. Now let's take a look. There it is. Last test passed. <laughs> Interesting. So this thing won't rev above, before it wouldn't rev above two and a half thousand. All right there, service engine soon. We'll clear the codes out, it'll set right away. Sometimes it revs up, sometimes it doesn't. And there it is, last test failed. So, it's not a circuit code, it's not a P0335, it's a P0336. The only way you can diagnose this truck is with an oscilloscope. Uh, you know, at least two channels, we'll do cam and crank, and see what is up with this crankshaft position sensor signal. Should be interesting. These trucks are always, uh, <laughs> if they're not stocked, there's going to be interesting problems. At least this one doesn't have a hole in the crankcase yet. So off camera, I went ahead and located the crankshaft and camshaft position sensor signals on the PCM. We've got a capture. Let's jump inside the XL7, take a look. All right, here we go. So right off the bat, you notice that these pulses are not even. Sometimes you get a fat pulse, sometimes you get a skinny pulse. So this is cam and uh, camshaft and crankshaft. Uh, they're both 12 volt signals. I just reduced the scale on the you know the blue trace to make it easier to see the different pulse widths. So my first question is, is this repeatable? We're supposed to have 24 teeth in one crankshaft revolution, which is you know half a camshaft revolution. Well let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Yes, it is a 24x signal. Second question is, is it repeatable? I mean, is something wobbling around and is this random or is every revolution of the crankshaft have the same signature? So you have to um, just, you know, write down, for example, short, short, long, 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 long. So two shorts, five longs, one short, three longs, two shorts, two longs, three shorts, long, a short, and a long, and then th ends with three shorts. So I wrote that down. Basically 2S, 5L, 1S, 3L, 2S, 2L, 3S, L, S, L, 3S. And you notice it repeats exactly like right there you're gonna have again two shorts three four five longs one short three longs two short two long three short long short long three short so what can we say about this truck first of all it's, it's not a wiring problem the signal is nice and clean transitions are you know straight up and down there's no noise um, and it's repeatable 
<laughs> so every time the crankshaft goes around, you get the same exact signal. So it's not something is loose. It really narrows down the possibilities. Could it be an air gap issue between the sensor and the crankshaft? Yeah, unlikely because it's so repeatable. I mean, this signature, it's almost like the reluctor doesn't have 24 evenly spaced teeth. For some reason, they're either wide or narrow. How do you explain this? And what am I going to tell the owner? Well, I'm going to tell him, jack up your truck, remove the starter, remove the crankshaft position sensor, and we're going to do, we're going to manually look at this reluctor spinning the engine by hand. See if we, you know, if we see all the teeth are even, and if they're aligned right with the hole, she'd be in good shape, right? Uh, if something's shifted, like maybe the crank is shifted, I mean this thing is, like I said, they don't baby the, <laughs> these trucks. You can see there's uh, all these GMC Sierras in the parking lot. Um, it's the uh, the truck of choice here for the local, uh, the, the Saudi student community. So we'll be back with this one, but I've never seen a waveform like this where it's repeatable but the teeth are not evenly spaced very very strange so something's going on here gotta take the sensor out I, I, I doubt it's a sensor issue it has to do with the reluctor so maybe find some pictures of you know what the teeth look like or or what um, yeah so we'll be back Back on the angry GMC Sierra. We've got it jacked up with a jack stand. Going after the crankshaft position sensor. Now, have to move the starter out of the way. And sure enough, that mounting tab looks like it's bent out. So the sensor. It looks like the rust prevented the sensor from going in all the way. Kind of see that. Get a little better lighting in here. You see that the mounting tab is kind of bent out because the sensor couldn't fit in the rusty hole. So we're going to have to disassemble this mess, remove the sensor, clean out the hole, lube it up, pop everything back in, and this thing should um, run like nobody's business. So basically, in this case, I think the air gap is a little too big. The sensor's not inserted all the way in, and um, you yeah, know that's the problem. I mean, we could just try forcing it in there, but I feel doing it like the right way. Well, here's a better picture of the sensor. The starter's just hanging out here. Got the bolt out, and it, it does say China on it, but you know, it could be GM OEM because everything's made in China these days. And let's try to get this sucker out. There we go. Yeah, there's no way that it's gonna fit in the rusty hole. He definitely jammed it in. Let me clean this stuff out and uh, see if we can insert it a little further in. Uh oh, we might have another variable here. I stuck my finger in the hole just to see if I could feel the teeth of the reluctor. And this is the weirdest thing. The reluctor is like, almost looks like a two piece, I don't know, almost like clutch discs or something. That doesn't make any sense. There's supposed to be a, you know, teeth. You can see it's like a two part. And the teeth are not aligned. Um, <laughs> well, this is gonna be fun. It's supposed to be a 24X. Let me see if I can get a, a little pry bar in there and see if those things move around. That is the strangest thing. All right, so I got a bore scope in the hole. I'm gonna bar this engine over. Let's see what that pattern looks like. See 
see what I mean by having two plates there? Why would there be two plates? And then there's like short, long. <laughs> oh man. There's long and a short, long and a short, long and a short. It's supposed to be 24X signal. There's a long, long, and then these are misaligned shorts over there, and this is a gap. Maybe it has to have some weird short long. So these groups, a little short and a little long on the right side, that's, you know, those are together. One, two, three. Then we get long, long, short. Short, 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 or long, long again, short. Okay, I'm gonna have to take notes on this. Is this the pattern that we were seeing on the crank sensor? Alright, so basically, we need a known good for a 2005.3, and it looks like that's just the way those teeth are set up. It's really weird. I don't know why that is, but let's um, make sure that air gap is correct, run the truck again, take another capture, see if there's any difference, see if it sets a coat. All right, so something's not making sense here. We're not looking for 24 even pulses. That's obvious. Because of the reluctor, they're not even teeth. That's for cylinder identification so the computer knows you know, the sequence. Uh, sometimes they just use one sink notch and even pulses, but not in this case. So I'm looking at the waveform from yesterday, and you know when when does it really act up? Well, here when I rev it up, you can see right here there is a glitch. So we have you know the short, short, long, 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 short, three longs, two shorts then this and then this that's not correct at idle when it's mostly happy slow speed we don't see that glitch all right short five longs short three longs two shorts two longs three shorts long short long and then four or three shorts all right interesting um, I found another waveform that I've stored in my library from uh, 8.1 and they it looks like they use the same uh, same crank and cam waveform so I just zoom in on one portion there we don't need that don't need that. So again, we're seeing one, two, three, four, five longs, short, three longs, two shorts, two longs, three shorts, long, short, long, and then one, two, three, four, four shorts. So maybe it's a little shifted. That's why you do the cam crank, you know, correlation learn. If the timing chain is a little stretched or whatever. But this is the correct pattern. Here, this is the correct pattern at idle. When you rev it up, you see this crap. That's what the computer's fussing about. That makes more sense. That makes me feel better that there's nothing wrong with the reluctor wheel. It's probably an air gap problem, unless that sensor is not OEM, you know, GM sensor. So I'm going to try to fix the air gap, shove the sensor in there a little bit, bend the little tab. So it sits closer in, we'll rev it up. Hopefully the code will be gone. All right, so let's uh, bend this bracket back into straight shape. You can see it's a little tweaked that way. So nice and easy. That might, might be all it needs. All 
All right, got that sucker in as far as it'll go. Uh, looks straighter, I guess. But <laughs> we'll uh, find out once we uh, start this thing up. All right, let's fire this thing up. Got the revs now. I think it's fixed. Just gonna get in here, clear the codes, rev it up, do a crank relearn. Should be perfect. All the cars have the cams. <laughs> Everybody's coming. Like <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so under actuation test, let's do the crankshaft position variation learn. Okay. Okay. Do not apply brake pedal cycle ignition from off to on. Apply and hold brake pedal. Start an idle engine. Okay. Amazing. This truck is fixed. So simple problem, but kind of weird. You know, we did catch it, catch the glitch on the scope, so it could either be a bad sensor or an air gap problem. And indeed, it was a little rust jacking around the hole, pushing the sensor. Like improper installation, I guess. So thanks all for watching. It's fun, <laughs> fun in this lie. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. Good throttle, good, good throttle, yeah, yeah. This is great. <laughs> so far, so good. Now we got the fake senator and the fake governor. <laughs> I'm so happy right now. I thought I was Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I'm very happy too that the problem was uh, easy to fix and no extra parts. So this is actually a six liter, it's an upgrade. You know, engine swap and then uh, the owner said the transmission's also upgraded it has a aftermarket you know cam you can hear it uh, so this truck has over 300 horsepower he said 330 or something like this 350 so he still needs to get it tuned but um, yeah at least that problem solved so we can uh, keep improving that BMW doesn't know what's <laughs> what's behind it Yeah, yep. The rear wheel drive. <laughs> See, you don't want to do this in the snow, right? <laughs> then you end up like, uh, like that Caprice, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, <all> the <laughs> like the, you know, the suspension damage. It's not good. All right, we'll see you next time.